Today we're going to be discussing the RAD scheduler for wind forms. This is going to be a lightweight overview just to kind of show you some of the capabilities of the control. So my name is John Keller and I am the developer evangelist for Telerik. I work with the RAD controls for wind forms and WPF primarily. Uh, if you're interested in uh, reaching me, you can visit my blog uh, at uh, www.johnkeller.com or my Telerik blog, blogs.telerik.com slash John Keller. Uh, very quickly, before we get started, I wanted to point out that uh, Telerik does have several offerings available uh, besides the WinForms. Uh, for desktop, we have not only WinForms, but WPF, Windows Presentation Foundation. Uh, we also, for the web platform, have ASP.NET AJAX controls, uh, Silverlight controls, as well as a, a content management system, uh, Sitefinity CMS. Uh, for those that work with uh, object relational mapping, uh, you can work with our Open Access ORM uh, tool. And uh, we also have the reporting tools, which are available across the web and desktop platforms as well. So with no further ado, let's go ahead and uh, proceed with our RAD scheduler demonstration. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a brand new WinForms application. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to add a few things uh, to my form just for demo purposes. So we have plenty of uh, room to work. I want to add a RAD panel because I'm going to be adding some buttons a little bit later for uh, logic to, to demonstrate some of the capabilities. And I'm just going to dock that to the top and we'll uh, resize that a little bit. Next, I want to add the RAD calendar. Uh, this is a complementary control that you can use uh, with the RAD scheduler to uh, just build some additional functionality into your applications. Next, I'm going to go with the RAD Scheduler Navigator, which is going to be a new control in the Service Pack 1 release, which is due out uh, about mid-April. So uh, if you uh, weren't aware of that, look forward to that. That's going to be a very useful tool uh, to complement the RAD Scheduler. And now I'm going to add the RAD Scheduler, and I'm just going to fill the rest of the form with that. Okay, so I want to do one more thing so that we're not resizing this constantly. I'm going to change this to start uh, maximized. So we have maximum real estate every time. All right, running this, you'll see that my RAD scheduler provides a few different things. Uh, first off, I have day view. Uh, I'm currently showing three days. I have uh, all the times for the days listed. I have shading for uh, out of office type hours. Uh, and then I have my individual hour uh, periods defined as well in a different shading. Uh, I haven't done any coding yet, so uh, let's go ahead and get this kicked off. I'm going to double click and show you that you have a built-in edit appointment dialog. So with that edit appointment dialog, I can say I want my appointment subject. I'm going to have uh, my location. I can set the background, uh, very similar to what you can do in Microsoft Outlook, in that I want something to be important, therefore it will be flagged with a different background color. Uh, I can specify my start date and start time, or start end date. I can select uh, start date and end time, or start time and end time. I can even specify something as an all-day event if I wanted to. Uh, so let me go ahead and create this as a all-day event. And I'm going to click OK. So now I've got this at the very top. It's going to be uh, from the two time periods there uh, to be an all-day event. If I wanted to come over here and create a different appointment, I can do my appointment. I'm going to take vacation uh, part of the day, so we'll say we want to start at 12 uh, p.m. And I'm going to run that through 5 p.m. So resources, another option that you have. This is a combo box that's available. Uh, I'll be populating that a little bit later, but for now, just know that that's available to you uh, to work with. It uses a collection that you can add items to. And uh, I'll, I'll go into that a little more in depth in a little bit. So I'm going to be showing my time is tentative. And I'm just going to put some details about my appointment in here. And if I click OK, now my appointment is in here. And it is colored differently because I specified this different uh, to be uh, vacation time, as a matter of fact. And then my tentative time here is shown as well. So now I've got this uh, from noon to 5. <coughs> I'm going to be taking... 
time off. Let's extend this out to 6 p.m. And I can do that by simply dragging and dropping. There you go. I grab that bottom corner. I can extend it out to 6 p.m. I can also grab the top and extend it upwards or, or down to be a shorter time frame. So very quite, quite simple to work with as far as uh, familiarity with working with the calendaring type tools in Outlook. If you've dealt with the calendar in Outlook and the scheduling capabilities that it has, you can work with the RAD scheduler and add those to your applications. So I can grab that appointment and drag it and move it around the screen or between days and so forth. So you'll see that it's very simple to work with. Uh, not a lot of effort required. And again, this is all out-of-the-box capabilities that uh, I have not uh, done any coding for. The other piece of the edit appointment dialog that you have available is uh, recurrence. So I'm going to say my recurring appointment. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on the recurrence section. And now you have an edit recurrence dialog. Uh, if you come into recurrence, you can say I want to specify the appointment start and end time and duration. I can set it for daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly. I'm going to say this is going to be weekly. I'm going to make it every, let's see, what is today? Today is Thursday, so I'm going to make it Thursday and Saturday. And uh, I'm going to end it. I'm just going to leave it there. So I'm going to click it there. I'm going to say OK. And I'll have it recurring on this Thursday and Friday. So, or Saturday. So now I have my appointments showing on the uh, RAD scheduler, and I can create those and change that as well. So let's say if I want to delete this, I can delete those as well right out of that edit appointment dialog. Uh, you can also, let me go ahead and add another one very quickly. My recurring, and I'm going to change this. Uh, again, I'm going to do Thursday and Saturday. OK, OK. If I uh, select an individual one and uh, want to make a change, I can do that, and it'll apply it to the entire uh, grouping. So next, uh, what I want to do is uh, show you how to do some work with this directly. I'm going to form load, and I want to add this. So. The RAD scheduler has the ability to show not only uh, day view, and I kind of showed that even a moment ago with uh, three days shown, uh, but I'm going to specify it to be a single day. So I just set the day count to one, and I can uh, have just a single day displayed. But you can also show weekly or monthly views as well. I'm going to get into those a little bit more later. But if I run this, now you'll see that it's only going to show April 2nd, and I, I can work with that from there. So the next step I want to demonstrate is uh, the ability to tie in the RAD calendar to work with the RAD scheduler. And the RAD calendar is a very useful tool and complements the RAD scheduler quite well. I can change this a little bit because right now April is very large and I'd like to show a little bit more functionality. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to allow multiple view, set that to true, and that tells me, tells the control that it can display more than a single month. I'm going to come down here and say I want multiple rows and make that, uh, we'll make it three. So now I have three months displayed inside of my calendar. Uh, because I'm doing rows, it's vertical, I'm doing rows. I can also do it, uh, uh, if I was laying this calendar out horizontally, I would do that with columns. But since I'm doing it vertically, vertically it'll be rows. And all I want to do is tie this in and say if I, if I select a date on the RAD scheduler or the RAD calendar, the RAD scheduler will be updated. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, you work with the RAD scheduler's active view and uh, just set the start date property to equal the RAD calendar selected date. Let's run that and I'll show you that. There we go. And as I click on the dates over here, you'll see that the date on the RAD scheduler is uh, changing to match that. And again, that's just a complementary control that you can use to, to really give a better look and feel inside of your application. What I'd like to point out next is uh, the April 22nd here. You'll see that I've got April spelled out in full in the 22nd. But I can change that format. If I come over to my form load, I'm going to change that format very quickly. I'm just going to come in here and say change the header format. 
That is a date, so I can use the standard date formatting uh, options. So I'm going to use the abbreviation for April, the date, and add the year to my format. And I just simply uh, apply that to the scheduler by setting the header format property. If I run that, you'll see here that now instead of April uh, 2nd, it actually is showing the abbreviation of the month, uh, the day, and now I've got the comma year in there. So you have, you have the ability to change how that header looks. The other point is uh, the fact that you can change the format of the appointment title. If I come in and run this and show you what the appointment title looks like to start, I'm going to say new appointment. And it's going to be from 9 to 10. I'm going to say OK. So you'll see that the start time, the end time, and the uh, appointment are displayed. Let me add one more thing. My location is also displayed as far as the title. Now, if I put details down here, this is a separate section. Uh, there we go. So if I put details, that's a separate section. But this appointment title can be changed. And uh, it's a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So through one single line of code, you can accomplish this by setting the appointment title format. But I wanted to show you that it's a little different than what you might be used to. Uh, the appointment title format, it works with a parameterized uh, formatting. So each individual piece of the, the uh, title that you were seeing displayed is actually a parameter that's passed to that title or that format. So I have appointment start time, that's a zero. Uh, appointment end time is one. Subject and then location. And those are all in that order. So if I only want to show subject and location, I can simply come over here and remove these, and let's say I want location to be included inside of some square brackets, and I run this. Now, I'm going to be able to create my appointment, and it's going to show the appointment a little bit differently than what we saw a minute ago. So here I'm going to say my appointment, and my location, and OK. And now, instead of the start and end time being displayed, I simply have the title, or the subject, and the location inside of the square brackets, displayed. So you have the ability if you wanted to add back the start time only, you can do that. And we'll put a dash in there between those two. And I can do show you that example as well. So now I'll do my appointment again. And then we'll put location in there. And we'll see 9 a.m. my appointment and where it's going to be uh, happening. So again, very useful for you to be able to change that appointment title format. OK, the next thing you can do is uh, change your view. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to put a button at the top. I mentioned a button earlier. Let me remove that text so we don't have that text in the way. And the other thing I'd like to do is make all this look nice and clear. So I'm just going to apply the Office Blue theme to it. And I'm going to drop a button into this panel, and we're going to call it change view. You have the ability to change not only uh, to the next view, but to the previous view and, and so forth. So I'm just going to show you how to change the next view. Uh, but you work with the active view, red scheduler active view again, and you can uh, set the active view equal to the next view. Now, there's actually a few different options here, so I'm going to show those. I'm going to say uh, get next view. But you have the ability to do uh, get next view with appointments or without uh, previous view and uh, previous view with appointments as well. I'm just going to show the get next view and run that. So as I'm showing a single day, if I change next view, the next view would be another day view. So it's just going to be that individual uh, day view that I'm working with. However, I can set an offset. So I can say I want to do it based off every two. So now I have a two offset. I can do a plus or minus here. I've got two offsets. So now it's going to say the next view two down. So it's April 2nd. If I click this, now it's going to be the fourth, the sixth, and the eighth. Now, if I'm applying a, that to uh, different views, so if I'm working with like a week, you'll see that that changes. Let me show you that very quickly. So I'm going to comment that out. I'm going to run this. And now if I get next view, I've got these all shown. 
see that it's jumping to the eighth and so forth. So it's going past those and it's going to the to the eighth and then the fourteenth and so forth because of that offset. So the view is changing, definitely something to be aware of. It's not just saying, oh, I'm going to the next day or to the next week or to the next month. Make sure you're aware of that when you're working with the offset. So I mentioned the fact that you can do uh, resources. I'm going to add the resources real quick, manually. Uh, resources are just a collection, and that's that combo box I talked about. Uh, they're just a collection, and you can add... Uh, the resource item here, I've just got that there, so I wanted to show you where it's located, but uh, you can do a using statement for those. Let me do that real quick. I'm just going to use the, there we go, use Visual Studio 2008's resolving feature there. So I'm just going to add two uh, laptops, A and B. Uh, the resource requires uh, two parameters, two properties here. We have the ID and then the stream name, so that way you have a, a way to reference the uh, resource that you're working with. So as I run this, now if I come in and try and create a new appointment, I'll have the ability to drop down this and select a uh, resource. And if I add that appointment, I can come in here and you'll see that my resource is maintained. I can change it and so forth. So the resources can be used uh, are added manually. You can also bind to those, and I'll show you that here a little bit later. So the next thing I want to show you before we get into too much more is uh, the ability to use the RAD Scheduler Navigator. The Scheduler Navigator, again, is going to be coming out mid-April and is going to be a very useful tool to work with the RAD Scheduler. So a lot of the functionality I showed you in the ability to, to do that as far as changing views, and uh, working with those, and I mentioned the change into week view and month view, you can do that with the Red Scheduler Navigator uh, through simply one, setting one property. So here I'm going to the Associated Scheduler property of the Red Scheduler Navigator, and I simply uh, say that I want it to apply uh, the Red Scheduler or apply its operations to the Red Scheduler. So now that I've set that one property, I'm going to run it, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the Red Scheduler Navigator. First, we start off with the day view, so I've got my single day shown. I can change to week view, and now you'll see that my entire week is displayed. I can uh, turn weekends on or off, uh, and I have the ability to maneuver that. Uh, I can switch to month view as well, and uh, I also get these nice uh, navigator buttons where I can jump through uh, the individual weeks or uh, days and so forth. So you'll see how that's working uh, for me. So again, very, very nice control, and it complements the scheduler very well, uh, allowing you to do a number of different things as far as uh, changing views and moving through uh, the scheduler with no code whatsoever. So the next thing we really need to look at is uh, the shortcuts down here. If I go into the shortcuts section, of the uh, toolbox and I add that to my form, I can actually uh, bind some of the uh, keystrokes to commands inside of the scheduler control. So here I'm going to add a new one and I'm going to say rad scheduler and I say I want to, uh, let's say, create a new appointment. I simply come in here and say what chord? I want to make it something really complex like control shift alt n. So as long as I press all of those keys together, now I've assigned that to the create new uh, appointment, and I can run this. And you'll see that if I press Control Shift Alt N, then now my edit appointment dialog will come up because I can create new. Uh, you can do the shortcuts for a variety of commands. Let me come back and show you some of those again. Uh, the, some of the things, so I did create new appointment, but you can do navigation commands uh, as well. So those are, those are also available as far as next view, previous view, and then appointments information. One other feature I wanted to display uh, before we get into the data binding piece is uh, if you have appointments on multiple days, you can uh, navigate between those if you're on a specific day that doesn't have appointments. So we're going to call this spec one. 
I'm going to say, okay, it's on March 29th, and we're going to call this one Spec 2. So now I have these two appointments, and I'm on the week view. And it's, it's great to be able to see that, but if I'm on another week and I don't have any appointments, I can actually say, ah, oh, when's the next previous appointment? This little gadget shows up, and if I click on that, it'll take me to that. Additionally, if I'm on a day view, uh, if it has an appointment, I won't see the gadget. But if I go to a, a day that doesn't, I now have the ability to go to that appointment. So it works from a, day, a previous view and a current view uh, appointments. Let me switch back to a previous. There you go. So I'm going to go to week view, and I'm going to create another one over here. And uh, we're going to say this will be spec three. And we're going to go OK. So now I want to select the third. Let's go to the third. There we go. So now I'm on a, a date that doesn't have an appointment, and it's between. Actually, I'm on the third, or 30th of March, but that's OK. You'll see that I get a gadget for not only previous appointment, but I get a gadget for next appointment. So I can jump between those as well. I was going to show that past the second one. There we go. If I go in between, again, you get the third and then the second. Okay, so those little gadgets are very useful to jump between dates that uh, if you're on something that doesn't have an appointment, you can jump to a date that does. All right, so now I want to show you how to do uh, some binding to uh, a data set. And uh, let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go and add a new item. We're just going to add a data set, and I'm just going to leave it named dataset1. I'm going to come over here to Server Explorer, and I'm going to pull over uh, a few tables. Now, before I go down this road, I wanted to show you uh, the tables inside the database. So let me switch over to SQL Server. I've cleared that out recently, so let's we don't need that. Okay, so here's my database tables. I have an appointments table that has uh, several fields that are all are going to map to my appointments dialog. Um, I have a resources table, which is going to give me my available resources and load that into the resources box. And then I have a, a uh, table between that'll just allow me to link those together with a relationship so that I can persist them to the database. Let me show you the uh, resources that I have. So I'm going to have an overhead projector, an LCD projector, and some paper charts. That's what's going to be uh, displayed inside of our resources. So now I'm back in Visual Studio. I'm going to get my uh, data set and drag that over and drop it. So now my data set's being created. OK. Yes, I want to save that. All right, so next I want to uh, add myself. Let me collapse my code. I want to add a uh, data set reference at the uh, form level, and there we go. We're going to call it scheduler data set. Additionally, I'm going to create myself a routine, and that's going to be called uh, bind to data set right here. And essentially what bind to data set is going to do, oops, my paste operation was a little bit uh, flawed, so I'll bring that, correct some of those. Okay, uh, I'm going to use the Visual Studio 2008 Resolve feature to uh, Correct some of those, get some using references. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go to full screen so you can see the code. But essentially, in my bind to data set routine, I'm just uh, creating my new data sets, uh, mapping up to those, those uh, bindings that we have as far as the tables. So next, I'm going to use the scheduler binding data source where I'll uh, have both my appointments and my resources. Uh, mapped to match up with the database, and then we'll apply that to the scheduler. So we'll start off with the appointment mapping info object, and uh, you'll see that it just says here's here are the properties for the appointments, and I can just give it the names of my fields that are in my data set. By doing that, I uh, can have this on my database. I could actually have this to be start date or whatever name I want, and this will just map it directly to the start property of an appointment. Uh, the key thing to point out here is the uh, resources, the relationship here. I've got my re relationship identified. This is what the uh, data set called it. Uh, so that's the name that I'm going to have there. 
then I apply that to my data source and uh, move on to the resource mapping information. So again, I pointed out earlier that you had to have an ID and a name for resource. I'm simply mapping that to the uh, information that I have in my database. All right. Uh, now, if I and then I'm applying that to my data source. Last, I'm going to tie that into the uh, red scheduler, and uh, now my stuff, my uh, data will all be bound to uh, the red scheduler when I call this routine. So, for the next step, I want to uh, add another button. I'm going to switch out of full screen mode, go over to my toolbox, and I want to add another button, and I want to call this. Uh, put some text in here. Call it bind to dataset. And then I'm going to add another button that'll say save to database. So my bind to dataset, kind of put some code in here for that, which will be called bind to dataset. And my other code is going to be save to the database. And that is persisting my uh, dataset out to the database. You know, I had a pasting operation issue. Okay. So you'll see here my code again. My code again uh, is, is just data set code. I'm just going to take my adapters and uh, update the data from uh, the data set and apply that. So if I run this, what I can do now is I can double click on this. I can enter a test appointment. I can say resource. Now my resources are bound. I click on LCD projector. I say OK. And then I can save that off to the database. And now if I close that and restart it, and click to bind, if I open this up, We'll now see that I've got my test appointment and my LCD projector, and those are there. I can also do recurrence at this level. So if I come in and change this to, let's say, we'll like it every weekday. If I click OK and apply that and then save that to the database, now uh, that's going to be applied to the weekdays from now on. You'll see that the recurrence is there in the scheduler. But let me show you how that's applied inside of the database very quickly. Uh, so I'm going to run this and select my rows. Uh, the recurrence information is stored in the recurrence rule and it is going to be iCal information. So it's in the iCal format and that allows you to uh, not have to have several appointments created. It's just a single appointment that you can work with, uh, but it's got this recurrence rule uh, available to you. So that's a very useful piece of information to know that the iCal uh, format is what's used for that recurrence. Okay, so that, that gives us our uh, binding. To a data set, the next piece I wanted to show you is the ability to export to iCal format. So we're going to add another button here. Let me scoot that over. Uh, we're going to add another button to our panel along the top. And we have the ability to uh, export to iCal format. And if you're not familiar with iCal, it's just a, a standard that you can use for uh, calendaring information. So Outlook and uh, Google uh, Calendar and several different tools uh, support iCal. So we're going to say that we're going to create uh, an i. We're going to be able to export our iCal, and the code for that's actually uh, very minimal. It's just a single line of code. You'll see here that as I go into my code, I've got some additional information where I'm saying we're going to have a save file dialog and so forth. Uh, I'm going to be creating a file stream. Let me resolve that quickly. And then uh, the real key is this. So I've got my RAD scheduler. I'm calling the export function. And I just pass it my file stream and uh, tell it to use the uh, Teller Coin Controls, uh, the scheduler iCalendar uh, exporter. So that's my export logic. Uh, really quite simple. So if I run that, I'm going to take my data that I bound. Uh, so I'm going to bind to the data set. I've got my test appointment that is. Uh, Every day uh, from this point on, I'm going to export that to an iCal, and I'm just going to call it uh, uh, my iCal file. I'm going to save that, 
So let's switch over to uh, my Documents folder, and I'm just going to tell this to open with Outlook. And uh, you'll see that now my appointment is pulled into Microsoft Outlook. Uh, it has all the same recurrence information. It occurs Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, starting on the 2nd, 9 a.m. to 10 and the, the time zone and so forth. So you have the ability to work with uh, your iCal and uh, external tools. This is really useful if you're doing anything regarding um, where your application might allow people to schedule information inside the RAD scheduler, and then you want it to be uh, propagated out to, uh, across the enterprise. Uh, iCal is a very popular format for that. So that was exporting. Uh, let me go ahead and close this, and I'm going to open it back up. And this time we're going to import that file back into the RAD scheduler. So you saw I could actually use it inside of Outlook. Now we're going to pull it into the RAD. Oh, I need to implement my code. So uh, let's go ahead and click on that. Double click the import iCal. And let me put my code in here for the import. And again, the code is very simple. This is all my open file dialog uh, information. But what we really need is this RAD scheduler import. Uh, we pass it the file stream. And then we tell it to be, use the calendar importer. And I run this. So now let's press the import cal iCal. I'm going to come down here and pick my iCal file. Open it up. And there you go. There's my appointment displayed as expected. And if I come over to the month view, you'll see that it's got all the recurrence information there, just the same as it does if I bind to my data set and so forth. So uh, again, quite simple to use. Uh, very beneficial as far as distributing that across uh, different areas in your organization and uh, or even beyond. Finish this out by uh, doing a real quick uh, reminder of the uh, Quick Start Framework, the QSF, uh, and the fact that it points out several of the features of the uh, RAD Controls for WinForms suite. Specifically, there are RAD scheduler examples that are available to you. A number of the features that I discussed today are available in the QSF. And uh, you can reach not only uh, a demonstration of how, you, how those things are used, but also how to accomplish them yourself with the uh, code examples that are provided in both C-sharp and VB.net code. Uh, specifically, I wanted to remind you uh, or point out the business objects or data set binding. Those are uh, available in the QSF and uh, probably be very useful to you if you're looking to persist the information out of your uh, RAD scheduler. So please take a few moments to look at that. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming out again today, and I look forward to seeing you at future webinars. Thank you.